Hello and welcome to the Irish in the UK. This week we're coming to you from the beautiful county of Devon. We're actually here in the market town of Tiverton. We'll be bringing you the news from Tiverton. We'll be meeting some of the community and the key people who mean so much in this area. We'll also be telling you a little bit of the history and we'll have some great music as well. So stay tuned and we'll take you around Tiverton. Everything is beautiful in its own way Like a starry summer's night or a snow-colored winter's day Everybody's beautiful in their own way Under God's hand the world Our first stop was to pop into Elsie May's Cafe for a cup of tea and find out about the history of the place. Mandy, tell me a little bit about Elsie May's Cafe. Well, the cafe used to be the tourist information office and the council closed it down about six years ago and it laid empty for a long time. Um, my husband and myself were walking past one day and we thought it would make a good coffee shop. So it kind of developed from there really. We just saw the building empty and thought, should we go for it? And, and, you're, in a, yeah, and you're in an ideal location here. At the bus station, yes. But um, once we discovered we'd do it, we thought, what would we call it? And we decided on Elsie May's because my grandmother was called Elsie May. And uh, she used to do catering for the local, you know, in the local area. So we named it after her. And then we, it became like a vintage style for, because of the name. We thought we'd go vintage with it. So. And of course, Elsie May's is known all over the place now, isn't it? It's a very popular name. Tiverton, yes. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot, you know, it's come back. A lot of people are naming their children Elsie May. Now, you've got a very special menu uh, list here as well, and that's based on, uh, I think that's based on the Russian books from the war, isn't it? Yes, um, because we went with the vintage thing, uh, my youngest daughter, she helped with the design of the place, and she um, chose the... Russian book to go on our menu and some of the food that we offer like we, we offer homity pie which was a, a wartime sort of meal because it contained no meat and um, it's actually really popular we, we serve it with salad and people love the homity pie uh, so you're keeping family tradition going here because you're working here your daughter's working here as well so it's, it's a family... It's, it's a, a family business, yes. Um, my mum, she's 80, and she makes our cake of the day. And my um, middle daughter, she's the manager. She manages it from day to day. Um, my husband, he works in the business. He does the cleaning, the maintenance, and anything that goes wrong, he comes and sorts it out. And my youngest daughter, she helps us with all our promotions on our Facebook page. And at Christmas time, we do Christmas story nights for the local children. Lovely to meet you today. OK, thank you. After leaving Elsie May's Cafe, we went along to People's Park to meet Philip Gibbs. And there was a special memorial taking place. In 1943, American forces came to this country to prepare for the invasion of German-occupied France. The 4th Infantry Division had its headquarters in Tiverton and units were scattered across the West Country, including here in People's Park. They departed from ports and slipways across Normandy for D-Day landings, many of them never coming home again. To remember them and all those Americans who fought in the war, a new memorial was paid for and commissioned by the Veterans Association of this division in Arizona. 
and unveiled in People's Park. To mark the poignancy of this ceremony, war veterans and families from both America and Britain gathered at the park for what was an emotional ceremony. Can you tell me a little bit about this memorial? Well, there's a slight bit of emotion here because the 4th Infantry Division of the USA that was stationed in Tiverton just before the D-Day landings uh, at Collie Priest in Tiverton, of course my granddad's cousin was part of that American Infantry Division. Him and granddad never actually met, but I do know in um, 1999 that because of the legacy of good feelings and fellowship, the local council put in a ground plaque, as I would call it, with some trees as a living memorial. And then I believe it was due to bad weather that caused the trees to have to be removed. And then in 2011, the uh, survivors of the, the 4th Infantry Division of the United States and some of their children and grandchildren came over and they dedicated a more permanent monument in 2011. In fact, it was by the Arizona chapter, and many people call it the Arizona Monument, rather than the American 4th Infantry Division Monument. And was the many people from around Tiverton at that particular time that served in the war? There, there would have been great numbers um, serving in Tiverton. In fact, I believe they adapted the height restrictions for the military, so people in the West Country, who are all sturdy, farm-working people, um, so they, but they wouldn't have made the height restrictions, so they all adapted them to, so that people who were sturdy and fit could actually take part and fight. I believe that was done for the Second World War. And as you can see, the commemorative poppies from the last Armistice Day that were laid in November um, are still here. And of course, in Remembrance Sunday this November, there'll be a fresh lot of poppies laid. Yeah. And of course, we're here today to pay our respects to all the British people and Irish people as well that died in the World War. Yeah, yeah, because um, if I can quote a comment by Johnny Cash, you may not agree with the war, but you've got to respect the fighting men who put their life on the line for their country. After leaving the ceremony at People's Park, we're now off for a look around Tiverton Market. Alan, how long has Tiverton Market actually been in existence? Well, the market itself dates back to, well, the 800s uh, originally, but this building here was opened in 1830. Uh, one of the first in the southwest, really, that's still here, and the original clock is still on the top. Now, you're the market manager, so tell me a little bit about the market here, what you do. Well, the market here is a general market on three days a week, but what we are doing is gradually moving it towards the artisan foods. We've got plenty of those. We've got a lot of crafts in this area. And the aim is really to make most of the traders, make them come, well, I say make them, they'll be from Devon or from sort of south end of Somerset. So they're just down the road. So it's local. We've got a lot of local crafters, local goods, local produce, local foods and the idea is we want to keep it local. Yep. Yes of course help, help the people that's working in this area and living in this area. Now you've got a beautiful display of poppies here this morning. That's right this is something the um, well obviously we got together with the traders it's something it's a hundred years the end of 19 the first world war 1918 a lot of people have got memories and what have you um, and it's, it is a loyal town if you like so we, we had the idea of putting everything together and some of the traders as well. We sent or contacted local schools around and about and local craft clubs etc. 
and the response has just been absolutely phenomenal. We've had well over a thousand poppies made by school children, as you can see all around. We've had the knitters hard at work making the knitted poppies and we've got loads of those. So the, the response has been brilliant and we, we've also introduced a remembrance book. You know, so people can actually come and write something about one of their relatives or, or close friends or something like that in the family from long ago they've lost. We should never forget, you know, um, learn from the past but we must never live in it. Well it's a lovely occasion as well for the community to come along here and pay their respects. Absolutely, They're, we are doing something uh, on the 9th of November where we've got the Mayor coming and the uh, Chairman of the District Council as well and the Leader of the District Council and hopefully two or three of the schools are coming along as well. Excellent, thank you Alan. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, I've really enjoyed my trip around Tiverton Market and I've picked up one or two bargains as well. Now, we're going to take a very short break. Coming up in part two, we'll be meeting some more of the people that's based here in Tiverton and finding out a little bit more about the history of the place. See you soon. Welcome back to the show. Well, we're having a wonderful time here at the Constitutional Club in Tiverton, and I've been joined by John Joyce, who is providing some of the music today. How is it all going, John? I think it's going well, but that's for other people to say, I think. <laughs> now tell me, where did you come up with the name for your group called Bladder? Where did you get the uh, name from? Right, OK, well, actually, that was uh, a colleague, well, in the band, friend, and uh, he felt that uh, he blagged his way through one or two gigs, and that's how it stuck. So, <laughs> now tell us about the music you play. Right, well, funny again, once again, it's mostly inspired by uh, my colleagues who we like blues, but we felt blues can be a little bit sort of uh, flat, you know. Yeah. So we wanted to try and uplift it a bit, and so we put our spin on uh, on on those songs. So. Now I can just detect deep down inside you there. There's a little bit of an Irish accent. <laughs> you, you have a very good ear, I must say, if you can detect that. Yes, I was born in County Wicklow, on a farm in Ireland, yes. <laughs> Been over here too long, I feel, so perhaps lost me accent, regret. So, you used to sing around the pubs and clubs, or were you too young when you left Ireland to do that? Oh, absolutely not, no. I just jigged up and down in front of the relatives, so they tell me, and, <laughs> and that's about as far as my musical career went in Ireland. <laughs> so tell me about the lads that's with you. Uh, well, there's Darren, there's Graham, who's been with other bands as well. We're all sort of a generic, we come together on an open mic night, really, and that's how we discovered each other. And uh, here we are as a threesome now, and let's hope it continues. <laughs> John, tell me about JCG Utilities. Well, JCG Utilities actually came into being when I retired from the Suffolk, Suffolk Police, 2009. And as such, what I can do is to help uh, members of the public reduce their household costs by putting together um, their gas, their electricity, their telephone, broadband and mobile phone, all under the one umbrella where they only pay one direct debit a month and only have one utility bill to ever worry about. Sounds like a great idea. Yes, I have to say I'm one of my own customers and I know how much it saves me each month. So if anybody is interested to learn more, they've only simply got to contact me on my mobile number or email address, send me an email. How long have you served in the police before you retired? I served 30 years as a constable 
in the Suffolk Constabulary and eight months as a Metropolitan Special Constable in Romford in, in London. Now we're here at the Tiverton Club today and of course Philip Gibbs that's heavily involved here with the club is your brother. That's correct. Um, he is my older brother I have to say. I could tell that by the way. Yeah, he, he is the good looking one. Uh, okay, so you're just down here for the weekend? Just for the weekend, yes. That's well, right. Yeah. Well, lovely to meet you, John. Yeah, and you. Thank you very much. I don't care who's right or wrong. I won't try to understand. Let the devil take tomorrow. Cause tonight I need a friend. Jim, great to meet you today. And tell me, what type of music do you play? Uh, folk, blues and country, mainly. I'm an acoustic player. Um, I'm a singer who plays guitar. Large. Now, you were telling me earlier on, you've got great strong ties with Ireland. Yes, I have indeed. I was conceived in Dublin and born in, in Bethnal Green. Right. <laughs> right. That tells me, yeah. So, and most of my family are over there, but are still living. Um, in the Dublin, mainly, where Dublin is. Uh, so, yeah. Do you get back to Dublin much? Um, I haven't for a couple of years, but yes, I'm, as a kid I'd be over there a lot, and then whenever I could. Um, but it's it, it's whenever I get the chance, really, because it always feels like going home. It's funny. So when did you get into music? Um, family have always been into music. You know, it's in Ireland, everyone sings. You go everywhere, everyone's singing. And then when I was about 20, I was out of work, and I bought myself a guitar and taught myself to play. Um, and then I played for a while, never played in public, and then I stopped playing for 25 years. Uh, and then 10, 12 years ago, I started playing again. Uh, went along to a couple of open mics and people started asking me how much I'd charge for a gig. So I've been doing it for a job now for a while. Talking about you and me and the games people play. Oh, the games people play now, every night and every day now. Never meaning what the same now, never seeing what the main in the wallow with the hours, in the rivalry towers, until they're covered up with flowers in the back of the black limousine. Talking about a you. Jay, tell me about Boots on the Ground. Yeah, no, sure. Uh, so Boots on the Ground is uh, it's a small bespoke charity uh, dealing with um, post-therapy um, activities, but also working with veterans to try and gain gainful employment using their current CVs that they gather from the military and their experiences, and then developing those experiences onto civilian street so that they get a, an all-round kind of benefit from the charity. Um, the charity started about four or five years ago um, and it was set up as an individual fundraiser for a, a friend of mine um, and it seems to have grown legs from there. Um, I left the military two years ago and unfortunately I was diagnosed with PTSD myself so we're kind of going forward with that because of my because of my therapy I've got a bit of an insight into actually what goes on so I can better understand veterans problems when they leave the forces and, and come out into the big wide world. Um, hopefully um, we're trying to raise money with this amazing event down in Tiverton today. Uh, and this money's gonna go towards a minibus where we can collect veterans, take them down to places like the New Forest uh, and have weekends away with the family. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because sometimes the families, they get ignored when a veteran's going through PTSD counseling, uh, which is something we don't get involved in. We actually signpost to other charities. Um, so we just help them kind of get back into civilian, civilian life uh, the best way we can. Um, and the way we do that is via fundraisers like this. Jay, tell me a little bit about what's happening here today then. Okay, so today we've got a charity event down at the uh, Tiverton Constitutional Club. It's a charity pool competition between veterans and a well-established pool team down in this area. Uh, and currently we're being beaten now, so uh, we're struggling to uh, keep reds above the water. Um, the money today is being raised um, through a raffle and a pool competition, um, and that money will hopefully go towards a minibus for the charity. And we'll be joined by Phil Gibbs now, Jay, who is going to make some presentation to you. Well, well, first of all, I'd like to do a big thank you to Eurogold for being your main programming sponsor. And on this instance, to Philip Gibbs Music, Austin, Texas, because on his behalf, 
we're presenting £200 to the charity. Thanks very much, Phil. You're talking about a year. Well, Phil, we are going to stay here tonight until 2 o'clock because we're going to have a great hula. Well, like you, Martin, I'm here for the crack, so all I can say is goodbye. <laughs> well, listen, that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. We are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. Both shows are repeated on a Saturday evening between 8 and 9pm and again on a Tuesday lunchtime between 12.30 and 1.30pm. All on Showcase TV, Sky Channel 455. So from me and... From me... Take care. <laughs> Gasoline's a fashion, it's all the rage One day we'll all remember the petroleum age The temperature is high and it's hell on the ice And sooner or later we're gonna have to pay the price The ocean's gonna rise when the ice caps get raised It'll all go down in the petroleum age It started way back before the First World War. The combustion engine started the first car. The wise called it the future and sounded so safe. They said, let's all move into the petroleum age. Then as time moved on, well, the future looked so bright. Lawnmowers, race cars, and planes up in the sky. Another